Hello there. Rishi Sunak marched out of Number 10 yesterday and basically accused a sector within a certain demographic in our country of being involved in tearing our democracy apart, tempered, of course, by also taking a dig at the far right. Wonder if he'll now be apologising to Lee Anderson and Suella Braverman. Well, this hasn't helped much, has it? Looking around social media this morning, Rishi Sunak's speech of unity outside Number 10 yesterday seems to have further divided the nation. Mostly against him. The open border lefty pro-Palestine mob hate him for pointing fingers at them, and the rest of us hate him for bringing out that now hackneyed trope of the far right, generally now taken as an establishment swipe at ordinary Brits. Anyway, here he comes now. And at the end, I'll show you what George Galloway said in response to this. In recent weeks and months, we have seen a shocking increase in extremist disruption and criminality. What started as protests on our streets has descended into intimidation, threats and planned acts of violence. Jewish children fearful to wear their school uniform, lest it reveal their identity. Muslim women abused in the street for the actions of a terrorist group they have no connection with. Now our democracy itself is a target. Council meetings and local events have been stormed. MPs do not feel safe in their homes. Long-standing parliamentary conventions have been upended because of safety concerns. At least he succinctly outlined the situation that decades of our current political masters have brought us to. It didn't all just jump out of a jack-in-the-box yesterday now, did it? But now he wants our help to put the genie back in the bottle. And it is beyond alarming that last night the Rochdale by-election returned a candidate who dismisses the horror of what happened on October the 7th who glorifies Hezbollah and is endorsed by Nick Griffin, the racist former leader of the BNP. He makes it sound like a military coup, doesn't he? But whether we like it or not, a democratic by-election got George Galloway elected, and Sunak could not even bring himself to actually mention his name. This election is the direct result of the policies of successive governments to have open borders and no integration of newcomers. Many of us saw this coming, so why didn't he? I need to speak to you all this evening because this situation has gone on long enough and demands a response not just from government, but from all of us. Britain is a patriotic, liberal, democratic society with a proud past and a bright future. A proud past? What? The very past that has been comprehensively dismantled by our education system and the woke establishment over many years and decades. The proud past we're all expected to disown while we tear down all proof of our heritage so as to appease the intolerant newcomers. That past? We're a reasonable country and a decent people. Our story is one of progress, of great achievements and enduring values. Immigrants who have come here have integrated and contributed. They have helped write the latest chapter in our island story. They have done this without being required to give up their identity. You can be a practicing Hindu and a proud Briton as I am, or a devout Muslim and a patriotic citizen as so many are, or a committed Jewish person and the heart of your local community, and all underpinned by the tolerance of our established Christian church. Oh, the church and Christianity in the UK, where you're not allowed to pray or sing hymns in public for fear of arrest by our two-tier policing system, and where even silent praying can lead to having your collar felt where the leaders of the Church of England seem more worried about the followers of other religions than their own flock.
A church whose vicars happily hand out baptisms for conversion for what to me appears to be for the political reason of preventing deportations. That church? We are a country where we love our neighbours and we are building Britain together. But I fear that our great achievement in building the world's most successful multi-ethnic, multi-faith democracy is being deliberately undermined. Undermined? Yes, by the buffoons in Parliament, following the guidance of outside influences like the WEF, the WHO, Ecoloons and the UN. A process that is dismantling and bankrupting our country. There are forces here at home trying to tear us apart. Since October the 7th, there have been those trying to take advantage of the very human angst that we all feel about the terrible suffering that war brings to the innocent, to women and children, to advance a divisive, hateful ideological agenda. That has been apparent to the rest of us for years. On too many occasions recently, our streets have been hijacked by small groups who are hostile to our values and have no respect for our democratic traditions. Membership of our society is contingent on some simple things, that you abide by the rule of law and that change can only come through the peaceful democratic process. Threats of violence and intimidation are alien to our way of doing things. They must be resisted at all times. Membership of our society is contingent on what? No, apart from those who were born here, membership of our society is now contingent on just arriving here. Once in, always in, whatever you get up to. Nearly everyone in Britain supports these basic values, but there are small and vocal hostile groups who do not. Islamist extremists and the far right feed off and embolden each other. They are equally desperate to pretend that their violence is somehow justified when actually these groups are two sides of the same extremist coin. Ah, it had to come, didn't it? The far right. A couple of minutes ago, he was lambasting George Galloway for being voted into Parliament. And George Galloway is someone I would describe as being on the far left of politics. So why no mention of the far left, Mr Sunak? Or are you programming us to be ready for a battle against the far right? I.e. a fight against the ordinary punter when they tire of your duplicity in saying your control borders, but you never do. Neither group, except that change in our country can only come through the peaceful democratic process. Both loathe the pluralist modern country we are. Both want to set Britain against Britain to weaponize the evils of anti-Semitism and anti-Muslim hatred for their own ends. The faith of Islam, peacefully practiced by millions of our fellow citizens, is emphatically not the same thing as the extremist political ideology of Islamism which aims to separate Muslims from the rest of society. Islamist extremists and far-right groups are spreading a poison. That poison is extremism. The brass neck of that man. He runs a two-tier policing system that only targets one side with any force, the far-right. Just look at what a certain demographic has been getting away with up till now. Now compare that to the two years that Sam Melia got. I don't agree with what he did, but the sentence does appear to me to be excessive when compared to the soft treatment others get. It aims to drain us of our confidence in ourselves as a people and in our shared future. They want us to doubt ourselves, to doubt each other, to doubt our country's history and achievements. They want us to accept a moral equivalence between Britain and some of the most despicable regimes in the world. They want us to believe that our country, and the West more generally, is solely responsible for the world's ills, and that we, along with our allies, are the problem. In short, they want to destroy our confidence 
and hope. I'm not sure that those generally on the right want any of what he's just been talking about. Only those on the far left and those of a certain demographic. We must not allow that to happen. When these groups claim that Britain is and has been on the wrong side of history, we should reject it and reject it again. No country is perfect. But I am enormously proud of the good that our country has done. Our place in history is defined by the sacrifices our people have made in the service of their own freedom and that of others. And when these groups tell our children that they cannot and will not succeed because of who they are, when they tell children that the system is rigged against them or that Britain is a racist country, this is not only a lie, but a cynical attempt to crush young dreams and turn impressionistic minds against their own society. You're going to have to have a battle with the education system over that one because they're at the starting gun end of the indoctrination process that does all it can to hold young white kids, especially boys, back. And now we have public and private sector employers queuing up not to hire white applicants. I stand here as our country's first non-white Prime Minister leading the most diverse government in our country's history to tell people of all races, all faiths and all backgrounds it is not the colour of your skin, the God you believe in or where you were born that will determine your success but just your own hard work and endeavour. Wonder how many white boys trying to get into our armed forces or police force would agree with him on that one. And we must be prepared to stand up for our shared values in all circumstances, no matter how difficult. And I respect that the police have a tough job in policing the protests we have seen and that they are operationally independent. But we must draw a line. Yes, you can march and protest with passion. You can demand the protection of civilian life, but no, you cannot call for violent jihad. There is no context in which it can be acceptable to beam anti-Semitic tropes onto Big Ben in the middle of a vote on Israel-Gaza. And there can be no cause that you can use to justify the support of a prescribed terrorist group like Hamas. So where was the far right in all of that? And yes, you can freely criticise the actions of this government, or indeed any government. That is a fundamental democratic right. But no, you cannot use that as an excuse to call for the eradication of a state or any kind of hatred or anti-Semitism. This week, I've met with senior police officers and made clear it is the public's expectation that they will not merely manage these protests, but police them. And I say this to the police, we will back you when you take action. We will back you like we back our armed forces. Oh. But if we are asking more of the police, we in government must also back up that call with action. To that end, this month the government will implement a new, robust framework for how it deals with this issue to ensure that we are dealing with the root causes of this problem and that no extremist organisations or individuals are being lent legitimacy by their actions and interactions with central government. You cannot be part of our civic life if your agenda is to tear it down. Oh no! That appears to be Westminster's job at the moment. Obviously Sunak doesn't like the competition. We will redouble our support for the PREVENT programme to stop young minds being poisoned by extremism. We will demand that universities stop extremist activity on campus. Universities will see that as shutting down anything to the right of Karl Marx. We will also act to prevent people entering this country whose aim is to undermine its values. Stopping those rubber boats would be a good start then. But you can't even do that. The Home Secretary has instructed that if those here on visas choose to spew hate 
or protest or seek to intimidate people, we will remove their right to be here. Oh, my sides are splitting. It's not the Home Secretary that decides, it's the lefty woke judges that make those decisions until such time as you grow a pair and get us out of the ECHR. And our Britain must not be a country in which we descend into polarised camps with some communities living parallel lives. It is not enough to live side by side. We must live together. Once again, talking as if this has only just started, it's now entrenched, making it harder every year to address. United by shared values and a shared commitment to this country. And I want to speak directly to those who choose to continue to protest. Don't let the extremists hijack your marches. You have a chance in the coming weeks to show that you can protest decently, peacefully, and with empathy for your fellow citizens. Let us prove these extremists wrong and show them that even when we disagree, we will never be disunited from our common values of decency and respect. I love this country. My family and I owe it so much. The time has now come for us all to stand together to combat the forces of division and beat this poison. We must face down the extremists who would tear us apart. There must be leadership, not pandering or appeasement. When they tell their lies, we will tell the truth. When they try and sap our confidence, we will redouble our efforts. And when they try and make us doubt each other, we will dig deeper for that extra ounce of compassion and empathy that they want us to believe doesn't exist, but that I know does. If we do that, we can build on our great achievement in creating today's Britain, a country of kind, decent, tolerant people. We can make this a country in which we all feel a renewed sense of pride. This is our home. So let us go forward together, confident in our values and confident in our future. Hopefully we'll soon see him walk away from the podium and into number 10 for the final time. So leadership, not pandering and appeasement. Just more words. Legal and illegal inward migration will continue apace and the visas will still be handed out like confetti, while the far right will continue to be the target. Anyway, here's what George Galloway said when Sky News asked his opinion on Rishi's speech. Many Jewish people think are we, threatening we had this slogans. We conversation last night. Why are you reheating it? Because in the light of the Prime Minister's in Don't keep statement. telling me about the Prime Minister as if he was Moses. Do you not respect the Prime Minister? <laughs> he's, 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 I don't res Do I respect the Prime Minister? I despise the Prime Minister. And guess what? Guess what? Millions and millions and millions of people in this country despise the Prime Minister. I don't respect the Prime Minister at all. I do wish Galloway would get off the fence and tell us what he really thinks.